Welcome back to Anchor Designs. I'm James, and today we are going to be looking at our newly designed Anchor Bandsaw Guide Assembly, which we have made. So let's jump straight into it. Let's get started. Okay, let me get you up to speed if you haven't been following along with these series. This is the original blade guide, and this had uh, used a spiral band, so it wasn't your typical um, toothed blade that you'd, uh, you'd be familiar with. Um, so we got rid of this, and we're converting our bandsaw over from the spiral uh, blades uh, over to the um, more standard bands that you get. Now, onto the bandsaw guides. As you can see here, I have got very, very many. And not because I want loads, it's because this has taken a long time for me to get right. Um, and it's been a proper challenge to actually get to where we are now. So behind the scenes, I just want to be totally open with you guys. If you are thinking about doing this, you know, the magic of YouTube, it takes a lot of try and effort. So I'll run very, very quickly through these here and how and why I made mistakes and got to this point. So let's start off with number one. Before we get into all of the details and the design changes across the range, um, let's first talk about how we started. So from the blade guide assembly, uh, I took rough, rough, rough measurements of what I thought was right. I compared some other people's um, options and then I kind of got my part one, which was uh, this one. And these are designed to have just from one sheet, 3D parts, um, in, sorry, 2D parts into 3D parts. And the whole idea for these was to twist round like so, they've bent across and this would allow easy assembly. So this was mark one and I bent these up and I noticed I had struggles with um, the bending relief here and it was stretching holes. If you have ever used a press break or anything on that, you'll know exactly what I mean with that. Hence why we then became with these slots. Second of all, I measured from the end point from here to the uh, back of the blade, which was a really deft idea. Um, so this was instantly scrapped. So back to the drawing board. From then, uh, we then decided to go down uh, this route, and this is now uh, Mark II. So this is before I had the basic jigs of actually folding this uh, to a, a good amount of accuracy here. So I've been bashing these around just to play with them and adjust them. Uh, so this was kind of Mark II, if you like. So we still kept this uh, swept back base and I then increased this area um, to actually follow uh, these blade guides here, and we did nothing with the top piece, mainly on the bottom piece. Still had the problems at the base, so then we decided to go for a relief here, and we put in a relief into here. There was a problem with my CAD, so when I sent this to the uh, laser cutters, uh, they cut these, they just clicked go, and uh, one of the slots was missing because Fusion hadn't corrected the contour uh, that these slots had put in. So that was another failed attempt. So we're now on failure number three. Uh, so then we've got to this point here. So again, snap these off. Uh, that leaves quite a nice easy one to cut off. Then you just uh, take that off and cut that off, etc. whatever you want to do. So then we're starting to get pretty close. So now our relief angles from here are quite nice and easy to bend. We're not struggling to actually form these at all. And I'll show you of me doing that as well. I did have trouble with these parts at the top. So bending these down, uh, it started to create a split. I'm on focus just there because there's no relief for the material to go so it's starting to split from the outside you will notice on all these bend lines i've put in these small uh, relief circle cuts on here a to square up on the tooling and b to obviously give you that um, uh, that datum point and so it's not going to split and stretch the material so that was probably mark four and then I got the lower half to work and form pretty well when I then tried to fit it up with the bandsaw. Uh, this slot was off and I needed much more adjustment from actually measuring these. It, I 
try to measure three different band saws that I've got. So I've got this one, I've got a Myford one, and then there's another one uh, close by to where I live. And I took kind of a range of measurements um, so it could kind of be universal. Um, yeah, didn't quite work. So I think now attempt four, which is on the band saw. So let's take a quick look at that and see how and why we got to that point and if it is gonna work. Okay, so we're now on Mark 5, I believe, and this is kind of a rough fit up. Now, I don't actually get a lot of time spent in my shed, so this is kind of a rough start out, you know, kind of get in there moment. So, these are the reliefs, so they've been uh, much nicer, and we've got a much more 90 degree um, profile on the sides here. We've had no splitting, which is great. And again, we added an additional slot in the top uh, to try and fold that. Now, technically, you shouldn't be able to do that because we've got um, the same material in the same bend line. I'm not going to get too nerdy with this, but the big difference between the top and the bottom is we increased the slot here. So this is now actually quite suitable for quite a lot of applications. Uh, this bolt here is just, uh, you know, rough setup at the moment to actually get me started. Uh, but the whole design of uh, this is able to slot together and then, you know, we're going to weld a bead down either side, square these off, and then we're going to fit our um, actual ball guides, uh, ball bearing guides from each side. Okay, before we get into this, uh, some of the camera angles are going to look a little bit dodgy, so, I, you know, I do apologise for that. However... What you've got to bear in mind is that the travel of the blade has got to obviously go into the center point here. And the ball bearing guides, I'll assemble this, I, I disassemble everything just so you guys could actually see what I'm talking about. The adjustment has got to cater for a variety of lengths of blade. So especially if you want to do like a, a quarter inch or up to like a half inch blade, different, you know, different application, different blade, etc. And it's something that you've got to cater for. So you need to be able to have that traverse adjustment on the top, as well as having mm, kind of maybe a little bit of side to side. But it was very important for me to be able to align the center point of the blade that's going in to then into these points so actually working out these bend lines the reliefs the thickness of the bearing uh, the distance traveled in between and the back and uh, lateral adjustments were you know massively important for these so there's a lot of work that does go into this um, so if you are thinking about doing this it's not kind of a draw it up infusion and it works you know this is a honest youtube channel this has taken five attempts and I'm yet to actually try it. So uh, let's take a little more of a closer look now at the ball bearings and what we've done and why we've done it. Okay, so we're using just these cheap and cheerful bearings. There technically shouldn't be a lot of force on um, the side adjustment wheels. You kind of actually don't want these to touch until they're um, almost under a load. So it's mainly the back one that does most of the guiding, um, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So again, cheap bearings, and we want these to be able to ride very, very squarely. Um, as So everything's got to be nice and square, so these are going to track correctly. So if you don't know, these are called shoulder bolts. So these are typically designed for a hardwearing surface. So something like a bearing is going to slot onto there and give you a very nice surface for this to actually ride and, and use on. So you have to kind of work out the uh, thickness of the bearing and then to this to actually go on to uh, this part here as well as being able to um, tighten these up and adjust them uh, nice and nice and easily there's obviously difference in material i used a laser cutting machine no, i don't have one uh, but to actually cut these um, parts out so there is a little bit of burr that you have to uh, deburr and take into account as well as tolerances on the laser machines is that sometimes these fit sometimes these don't but again this is kind of the route that i went down and i'm pretty confident with it so far now i know one of the questions will be well why didn't you machine one and i did machine a rough version up and it kind of worked you know absolutely fine and it took a long time uh, it took a very, very long time for me to actually make those and for it to work well. Um, and to be honest, for 
uh, the time that it took me eventually to get this right, this is going to be able to be used on a lot more band sorts. So, uh, plus it looks kind of nice, it's universal, and it's using some really good, um, you know, good height tolerances, etc. So, uh, it was quite a nice design project that I wanted to kind of challenge myself with. There's a lot of you know, things that you have to take into account and tolerances on this. I don't want to talk too much. So anyway, here we go onto the sides. You've got plenty of adjustment here. Uh, I cocked up a few times with the length of the shoulder bolt. So I ended up ordering uh, some smaller ones to take into account. Again, thickness of bearing, thickness of material, and then be able to clamp this up without having too many washers because washers look ugly. So what we're going to do now is these are the final components here. So increased slot um, adjustment for the back on here. So it's not going to uh, foul or, or mess with anything. We're going to deburr all these up and I'm just going to put some MIG welds down either side. So, you know, we can get these pretty nice. I'm going to do this off camera because you're not here to watch me weld badly. You're kind of here to, to watch me um, and learn about these. So uh, I'll see you in five minutes. Oh yeah, I did, uh, before I get actually onto welding, uh, I've just deburred everything with our little tool, the little Scotch-Brite deburring tool. Um, and there's a reason why these are connected. So if I was using this in kind of a commercial grade press break, uh, this is very, very close to the bottom V that you're gonna have. So this kind of acts as a handle for both sides here. Uh, and it's just gonna keep the operator's pinkies nice and, uh, you know, nice and safe so that was a design and a design type thing that i felt was quite important with these reliefs into here it's again it's three mil uh, mild steel i just use one of these which is a uh well it's a punch and a die uh, used for uh, bending material colin furs has got one and i bought mine from a company called frost restorations they're pretty good. You cannot use these. Well, you're not meant to use these with three mil uh, mild steel. I still do, and it's knackered up the tooling eh, a little bit. But again, if you actually look at how much I am bending, it's very, very minute, and this just gives you, you know, enough material uh, to actually bend. And yeah, it's okay. They're like twenty quid, so I can just grind off a little bit more if need be. So something to bear in mind. Okay, so we're back from the welding here. I've just put a tack on the rear end, as you can see there. And I did put a bit of a bad bead on that side. I did it with a stick welder, so you know, give a guy a break. Uh, but everything does work. I'm just fitting everything up now. And I would like the uh, wing nuts to be on um, all sides. Uh, but I haven't got any. So uh, everything's working nice and fine. There's no kind of messing. I might need to put another washer on the rear. In fact, I think I will. So it's binding up a little bit. But we are ready to put this onto our bandsaw. So I think for this video, what I'm going to do is just use the temporary one at the moment. Uh, the actual holder, just so I can kind of get everything lined up. But that is our designed um bandsaw assembly guide so i'm super happy with those everything lines up so this is in the center of the gap these are fully adjustable uh, you're probably wondering why i made these so wide is because to be honest i thought it'd be easier for um just blade changes if it gets a little bit fiddly i can move these out of the road and it's just going to be easy enough so i thought eh. um if it's got wing nuts on as well, it is going to hit these sides, but that's going to make it really nice and easy. You're not going to need two tools. You'll just need an Allen key to adjust the front. So if I did have a wing nut on here, you're tightening, it's just going to hit up against the back of here. And that's just going to make that super easy to actually adjust and move. But everything's free of everything. Um, the blade is not going to hit anywhere, um, especially the blade uh, length that I've got. I did think it might hit here, but it's not going to, which is great. So uh, let's get this fixed up. Okay, this is it in place now. So we've got the adjustment onto the back. Uh, we've got all the accessible adjustment here on the sides and again on the front when we've got those parts coming in But that is looking pretty good I'll try and rotate this if I can and you'll see that line up here 
So when the blade's on, I mean, truth will be told, you know, when it's when the blade's on, it should work. So there's no kind of reason why not. But uh, it's taken a long time to get to this bridge. So uh, let's look at the uh, the wheels now and see what we've been doing with those. 